why did you decide to come out and just kind of interact with folks in Georgia today? This is to draw attention to what gas prices have on a, the effect of the average human being. Uh, I remember when I was a young man, I was trying to just make it through my day when I had a used Datsun 510 in 1971 with 140,000 miles when I bought it for, I think, $1,295 actually, now I'm thinking about it. And I remember trying to put gas in it. Luckily, gas was cheap at the time. Right now, gas is not so cheap. It's up several dollars from, or actually a couple dollars from where it was a, a few years ago, and uh, at least a dollar more expensive than it was when we had the president take over. Uh, one of the things that concerns me is not just the gas prices, which drive the economy, but energy prices as a whole. When we start talking about whether it be nuclear or solar or windmill, whatever it is, to have more resources, to have more alternatives during different times when we need that energy to drive the economy. As Coolidge once said, the business of America is business. Nothing drives business like energy. Energy, cheap and production uh, of energy is what drives the economy. And when people don't have that, it affects everybody. Just getting to your job, actually not being able to pay for groceries or pay for medications. Those sort of things matter to the people. And that's what we're trying to make people aware that we can produce this energy cheaper and more efficiently than other countries. It would drive the prices down. It'd be better for the environment. We need to complete those sort of things. And we also need to pay attention that when we do things to artificially manipulate the economy, like when we raid the strategic national reserves, uh, that actually has to be replenished, which is going to force the gas prices back up. So it's a net neutral at best. What we want is to drive the prices down permanently, make sure that we are in charge, that we're not undercutting, uh, we're not undercut by foreign adversarial nations like Russia or Venezuela or other countries who want to do harm and who don't do energy as well as we do. Let me ask you this. As we're looking ahead to November, we've seen a lot of advertisements come out here in Georgia attacking Kamala Harris and the Biden administration for this 40-year high inflation, for driving prices mm -hmm. up, for Bidenomics. How do you feel having Trump in the White House in November would change that? Well, when you unleash the ability to produce energy in America, it will drive gas prices down. It's been shown every single time we've done it, whether it be through fracking or drilling or whatever it is. We produce it, by the way, more efficiently and more clean than other countries. When we drive the prices of energy down, it benefits the economy. That's just a, that's an automatic in economics. Anybody who understands economics understands cheap, affordable energy not only helps businesses, but it helps the individual make it through their day. But how would Trump being in the White House, which specific policies would you say that you agree with would drive it down than what, different than what Biden's doing yeah. right now? So what they've done, and they talk about record this, record that, but it's really an artificial manipulation of, of the facts. When you allow people to drill more and produce more, without the regulatory burden, without uh, resisting new drilling and more, and more fracking and stuff like that, that actually, uh, when you disallow that, that drives the prices up because it's limited energy production. Uh, when you drive the prices up, it has that cascade effect. And one of the things they did, once again, going back to the energy, uh, strategic energy reserves, uh, that has to be replenished. We have a war in Ukraine. We have a war with Israel right now, and we have a potential war with Taiwan. If we get caught, during this time where we've depleted those energy resources and all of a sudden we're in trouble, we can't replenish it, now what are we gonna use? We don't have that, that's a strategic reserve for a reason. And we depleted it during a time of war. And by the way, it has to be replenished. When it's replenished, it will drive the prices up the same way it drove it down. It's an artificial manipulation of the economy, which is going to be fixed one way or another. And, and so it's gonna be a net neutral for consumers at best. At worst, we actually end up in a war and we don't have our strategic reserves. That's why it was created by the national government to begin with. Despite everything that's happened um, here in Georgia, uh, the former president not saying that he lost the election here, you know, are you, how, what is your message to Republicans who don't necessarily like that verbiage that yeah. he has been using, the, the way that he speaks, the, the lie that some people say that he has told? What is, what is your message to those Republicans to say, basically kind of put that aside and vote for the ticket anyway? Why, why are you supporting the president? So ultimately, this is not going to be about personalities. It's not going to be about the next election. This is about the future of America. And I'm not just speaking to Republicans. I'm speaking to independents. I'm talking to moderates. I'm talking to Democrats. When we look at what benefits every person in America, what's going to matter to your children, the things that are going to affect this great nation and the promise that we give to people, whether they come here from South America 
or Asia or Africa or anywhere they come from for that American dream and I hope they come here legally because we see what the burdens of illegal immigration can do to the deficit and to crime and everything else but when you do it right you come here for the American dream you expect one thing and that is a country free from the burdens of regulation free from the burdens of a government overreach a constitution that was designed to put the people in power rather than the government and that has done something that's never existed anywhere else in the rest of the world and if you want to preserve that and you want to talk about the things that unite us the things we as Americans agree with wholeheartedly and that is first of all the American dream the the when when you're not forced to do things by the government when you have a budget uh, that's that's benefiting the people in other words the borders not being wide open to be paid for 10 million people to come here that cannot work cannot pay taxes but consume only that will get voter representation by the next census in 2030 by the way and if you have 10 million people that's what 12 13 congressional districts worth of people they get representation without paying taxes that's a manipulation of the voter system in my mind crime if you want to have less crime there's one party that's pretty obviously saying it's okay to come in stores. Take money out and, and you have to pay for it as a consumer. There's one party that specifically, you can, you can name it, and I know you can because you can see it in San Francisco and other cities where they say it's okay. You can't arrest them. You can't stop them as long as it's less than $1,000. Nobody thinks that's okay. That's not what America was founded on. Debt. When you see the huge debt burden, and by the way, I think Republicans are responsible for it too. But only one party is taking that seriously. That is your children's future. If you don't think that's going to affect us, when your debt burden, just paying off the debt interest is more than what you spend on the military per year, that is troublesome because it's only cascading and getting worse every year. And edu wait, there's two more. Education and energy. By the way, these are 60% to 80% issues in America. We all agree. It doesn't matter if you're Democrat, Republican, Independent. Uh, energy prices affect everybody. The average person is just trying to make it. Energy, cheap energy, affordable energy is what drives the economy. And then education, educational choice. How are you going to get out of poverty? If you're oppressed, if you're in, in inner city Atlanta, now I'm a Morehouse guy. You know this, right? I taught at Morehouse. I was a student body president at Morehouse School of Medicine. If you look at what affects minorities, the biggest thing is the start of life, right? The great equalizer is education. If you don't have educational choice, the ability to get an education where your school district sucks, so I, ha I should be able to go somewhere where it's good and have the government assist in that. We're not paying attention to that. The Democrats are absolutely on the wrong side of hi history. That's why Misha Maynard deserted their party. And she represents the AUC in Atlanta. The mayor of, Adel of Dallas has left the Democratic Party. Youngkin won his election in Virginia based on educational choice. DeSantis won his first election in Florida because of educational choice. Look at the things that affect your children. The future of America it has nothing to do with a personality. It has to do with policy. And I think that's what I'm trying to sell to people. This matters for your children. Don't get caught up in the hate. Don't get caught up in the rhetoric. Look at the policy that's going to benefit you and your children going forward. Just to follow up on that, we saw Republicans like Jeff Duncan get on the DNC stage yep. saying, you can still be a Republican and vote for the Harris Walls ticket, do the right thing. What's your response to that? He hasn't explained what the right thing is when he talks about policy. What policies has he addressed? He's still talking about personality. He doesn't like Trump, obviously. That's what he's basing this on. Okay, so is he pro-choice? Is that his uh, Is that his motives? Is he pro-government control? Is he pro-open border? Is he pro-crime? Is he pro-debt? Or is he pro-anti- uh, educational opportunities is he pro high gas prices what is he for that they represent that he's saying you can still be a republican and vote for them because every policy i see is against the conservative principles that i know and once again it doesn't mean i have to be divisive about things but i think we should have a real talk about what benefits our children going forward and if you're going to tell me that you can, i can be a republican and vote for harris and waltz tell me how what what thing do they represent that makes it, me feel good about that other than, oh, for some reason Trump is less, uh, or, or Harris is less offensive than Trump, because I don't see it. Congressman, people see national headlines all the time, but to Georgia voters here that will be casting their ballots in November, not just at the top of the ticket, but in your race and down the ballot as well, why should people go red this year? If you look at why people voted for Governor Kemp, 
Uh, it always comes down to the economy. I remember when Clinton was running. It's the economy, stupid. That was the motto of Clinton. Uh, people didn't worry about his affairs. They didn't worry about uh, personalities. They didn't worry about anything other than what benefits the average American. Because that's really what this is about, whether it be Newt Gingrich's policy and his commitment to America, his contract with America, which, once again, reduced government, got them out of the way so we could prosper. It's one thing to give you a handout. That may help you for a minute, but it's not going to help you be have pride in your life. What gives you pride, what gives you value, is when you work for something and you feel good about yourself. I can't do that by giving you things from the government. That will never make you feel good. That will never make you feel accomplished. We want opportunities because I know everybody in America has talent. We have the ability to achieve things. We just need to unleash the potential of what made America great to begin with. So when you say opportunity, are you talking about like workforce opportunities, yeah. affordable housing? So, so everything. So. When we talk about affordable housing, people instantly think the government's going to supplement and we say, oh, I can have a better house. Why not allow businesses to produce more jobs, which means higher income for everybody because you have more competition for income. When you have a booming economy, it forces the price point without artificially manipulating by saying we're going to have a minimum wage that's higher so people will be satisfied with the minimum wage. Why not give them opportunity to move up in competition where we have to pay more people because there's so many jobs, we have to compete for the, the market. That's how you drive the economy the right way because when you have more jobs, it benefits everybody. There's higher employment, you're paying more taxes in, even when you don't increase the tax rate. And you would say to do that by giving businesses bigger tax breaks to so, Georgia so to do. What we do right now, we have one of the highest corporate tax rates in the world for developed nations. That doesn't help us be competitive in the world market. We're fortunate we have good energy. We're fortunate we have a good history. We're fortunate we have the world currency standard for, by the American green dollar since Brex, Brex and Woods back in the early 70s. Uh, but if that goes away, if we start ruining our, our GDP to debt ratio, if that starts getting really bad, we'll go away from American currency and we'll be left with high energy prices, not the economic standard of, of the currency, and, and fewer jobs with a high tax rate where government's trying to buy things like votes with your taxpayer money, but there's not enough money to go around. So our debt keeps on going up and we go the wrong direction. We become a former world power. That would be very ho horrible for all of us. I want what's good for us, for our children, for the future of America. It's an honest debate. I want people, I can't wait till we get into debates because I'm going to talk about those things. It's not a hateful conversation. It is science. It's not political science, it's economics. It's the things that make an economy home and give everybody the opportunities that only exist here in America. So would you say that this election is going to be based on the economy? Voters, that's the top of mind right now. It's supposed to be. To. Now, we know that likability always plays a factor. For the last, since I've been alive, the likable candidate usually wins. But I think that is also affected by people's perception of is that candidate really relatable to me? Do they really understand my struggles? Do they think that I'm really worried about somebody who came here from Venezuela, or are they worried about my family? And this is really the question we have right now, is what's important to Americans? And that's why I said those, those issues, border, crime, debt, education, and energy, those are the things that unite us and divide the Democrats, and I think that's what's ultimately gonna win this election.